we cannot analytically solve most differential equations. All of the pretty techniques that the textbook states and which we do not present in this course are useless when faced with real world differential equations that you see in actual applications. There are a very few exceptions exceptions to this. Differential equations is simple enough that we can solve them. And in this video, we outline one such example. In particular, we know from calculus to this, that differentiation and integration undo each other. That is what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. Ergo, there are some differential equations simple enough that we can solve them simply using integration. Suppose we have a differential equation of the form, the derivative of our dependent variable with respect to our independent variable is a function of our independent variable. Such a differential equation as this can be solved using simple integration. The solution to this is the integral of this function. A few comments are in order. I say the solution. Solutions are, let's phrase this as sort of you need. Any solution to this equation has this form, but remember that a continuous function has infinitely many antiderivatives. If you compute this integral, you'll have a constant of integration plus c. So there are unique solutions are unique in the sense that they all look like this, but there are infinitely many of them in the sense that there are infinitely many antiderivatives, all varying by a constant. Another thing we should probably state up front is that writing integrals is easier than finding them. So the statement that we can solve differential equations like this can be a little deceptive. DY dx 
equals e to the negative x squared. Here's a differential equation of this form. e to the negative x squared is a continuous function. It has an antiderivative. And we can write down the solutions to this differential equation. It's the class of indefinite integrals of e to the negative x squared dx. What are these antiderivatives? Um, they cannot, they exist as purely mathematical objects, but they cannot be written down as a finite combination of standard functions. So we can state the solution, but unless we use a computer to try to numerically estimate this, we're really still as in the dark as we were before. With that caveat out of the way, Let's return to a remark I made earlier that solutions are sort of unique. dy dx equals f of x, and we'll put a condition here that f of x is a continuous function. This differential equation has an infinite class of solutions. All the antiderivatives of this function f of x. However, this isn't as bad as it might sound, because if we think back to calculus, if we find n antiderivative, so if capital F of x is n, anti-derivative, all other anti-derivatives have the form of capital F of X plus a constant. So there are infinitely many solutions, but if you found one, you have found them all. Now we've made an observation previously that we don't expect for differential equations to have unique solutions, but we do expect for initial value problems to be to have unique solutions. And that's true of differential equations of this form. If we have some condition y of a equals b, we no longer have an infinite 
class of solutions, the solution is now unique. And that comes from the fact that every solution has the form capital F of X plus C, and you can use an initial condition to find C. Let's round this out with an example. The derivative of Y with respect to X equals X squared plus one with an initial condition Y of zero equals three. According to what we've just said, a differential equation that looks like this can be solved simply by integration. And this is hopefully not a difficult function for you to integrate. Remember, we have this constant of integration. So this is an infinite class of solutions. Now y of zero equals a three. Plugging zero in for X and three in for Y. You see, we can solve for C. And as promised, we have gone from an infinite class of solutions to a single solution, thanks to our initial condition.